Welcome back to another video on the math channel. It's your teacher, Mr. Lim here. And in this video, we're going to be looking at how to sketch polynomials using the derivative. So by the end of this lesson, you'll be able to sketch the general shape of polynomials and find the key features of a polynomial and sketch it. So when we're talking about sketching the general shape of polynomials, I just mean recognizing it, what it will look like. So the general shape of a polynomial is determined by its degree. So if we had a polynomial, for example, um, f of x is equal to 3x squared minus 7x to the power 6 plus 9, the degree of this polynomial is 6 because that's the term with the highest power. So if this power is even, if the degree is even, then it's going to look something like this. Okay, it's going to look like that if the term is positive and it's going to be concave down if the term is negative. Okay, so here we can see that this term that I've just created is actually negative. It's negative 7x to the power 6. So because it's negative, it's going to be concave down. Right now, usually we see these parabolas when it's like x squared, okay, positive x squared or negative x squared. If it's um, x to the power of four or x to the power of six, it's going to be a bumpy parabola. So what do I mean by that? If it's x to the power of four, it could look something like this: a bumpy parabola. Either way, the endpoints are pointing in the same direction. Okay, like here, the endpoints pointing in the same direction, same direction. All right. If the degree is odd, however, it's going to look something like this. If the term is positive, or the other way around if the term is negative. Okay, so if the degree is odd, meaning like the highest power of x is like 3 or 5 or 7 or 9, then it's going to look something like this, or a bumpy version of it, where the endpoints are pointing in a different direction. This one's pointing up, this one's pointing down. Left one's pointing up, right one's pointing down. Okay, All right, so now that we've done that, let's have a look at how to find the key features of a polynomial and sketch them. So this is the method that I use for sketching polynomials. First, we need to determine the general shape. Just recognize what's the degree of the polynomial and then just sketch the, ref the rough idea of what it will look like. Second, find the y-intercept. Now, this video is based on U12 advanced um, content, so we won't really need to work out what the x-intercepts are. Um, so we're just going to skip that bit. The third thing we need to do is find the stationary points by making the first derivative equal to zero. But remember, because it's a point, we actually need to substitute the x value into the original function to find a y coordinate as well. Okay, when we find when we make the first derivative equal to zero, we're only going to get the x coordinate, but we need the y coordinate as well. The fourth thing we need to do is determine the nature of the stationary points. Is it a maximum or minimum turning point, or is it a point of inflection? It could be a horizontal point of inflection. And uh, the last thing is to find any points of inflection by making the second derivative equal to zero. And again, that's only going to give us the x coordinate so we need to sub that x value into the original function to find a y coordinate because it's a point of inflection. So today we're going to go through three examples. Let's have a look at the first one. The first one here says sketch y equals 3x minus x cubed minus 1. So the first thing I would do is I would determine oh, what would the shape look like. Well, the degree of this polynomial is 3. 
So I know it's, it's um, odd, and because it's negative, it's going to be it's going to look something like that. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work out the y-intercept. The y-intercept we let x equal to zero, so that's zero minus zero minus one, minus one. The third thing I'm going to do is work out the uh, stationary points by letting f of x, or, or sorry, f dash of x, or the first derivative, equal to zero. So I need to differentiate this. When we differentiate this um, function here, we'll get 3 minus 3x three squared. So the stationary points is when y dash, the first derivative, is equal to zero. So I'm going to make that equal to zero. 3x squared is equal to 3, x squared is equal to 1, so x is equal to plus minus 1. All right, we found the x values, but we need to work out the y coordinates. So when x is equal to 1, what is y equal to? And when x is equal to minus 1, what is y equal to? We need to sub these into the original function because we want to know what y is equal to. And this is what y is equal to. 3x minus x cubed minus 1. Do not sub it back into this. Okay, this is um, a common mistake that some students make. But when you sub it into that, you're actually finding what y dash is equal to, not y. Okay, we want y, so we sub it back into the original. So, when x is equal to 1, I'm going to uh, tap 1 equals. I'll clear that, and I've got 3 answer minus answer cubed minus 1. Gives me 1. So I know 1, 1 is a stationary point. I just don't know whether it's a minimum, a maximum, or a horizontal point of inflection. We'll work out the nature later. Next one, minus 1 equals 3 answer minus answer cubed minus 1 is minus 3. So we have minus 1, minus 3. These are our two. So 1, 1 and minus 1, minus 3. These are our two stationary points. Okay, I now need to work out their nature. Nature of stationary points. In order for us to do that, I need to uh, differentiate a second time. So y double dash is equal to, so we're going to differentiate this, we are going to get negative 6x. Now that we've done that, we need to sub these x values in. When x is equal to 1, actually let's um, I'll highlight it here. These are our x values, right? When x is equal to 1, y double dash is equal to, minus 6 times 1 is minus 6, that's less than 0, which means it's concave down, and therefore it's a maximum. Maximum turning point. So if you want to, you can write that here. That's a max. And when x is negative 1, okay, the other x value, what is y double dash equal to? Minus 6 times minus 1 is positive 6, which is greater than 0, which is concave up. Therefore, it's a minimum turning point. So that is the minimum. The final step before uh, sketching this curve is to work out any points of inflection. And the points of inflection is when f or when y double dash, in this case, is equal to zero, when the second derivative is equal to zero. Well, we've already differentiated the second time. It's over here. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to make minus 6x equal to zero. And I'll solve x is equal to zero. When x is equal to zero, what is y equal to? Because this is our point of inflection. So we need to we need the y coordinate. So I'm going to sub this zero back into this, which is going to give us minus one. 
So 0 comma minus 1 is the point of inflection. What does that mean? It means at that point, um, the concavity of the curve is going to change from either concave up to down or from down to up. So let's sketch this. We've got our y-intercept of minus 1. We've got, uh, which is also our point of inflection. We've got a maximum turning point at 1, 1. And we've got a minimum turning point at minus 1, minus 3. Okay. So, because concavity changes at 0, minus 1, right here, it's going to go from concave up to concave down. Now make sure you label each of these um, turning points. We've got 1, 1, and minus 1, minus 3. Okay, so that's our first example. Let's have a look at our second example here. Sketch f of x is equal to x cubed minus 3x squared minus 9x plus 6. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to determine uh, what should it look like. Will the endpoints be um, facing the same direction or in different directions? If we have a look at a, right, you see up here, I said it's going to look something like that, where the left-hand side is going to be pointing up and the right part is going to be pointing down. Well, that's exactly what we have here. The left part is pointing up and the right part is pointing down. So for this one, the degree of this um, polynomial is 3. So we know it's odd. And because this term is positive, it's going to be this way instead. Second thing we're going to do is work out the y-intercept. The y-intercept here is going to be 6. Okay, let x equal to 0. And then we need to work out our stationary points. So we need to differentiate f dash of x is going to equal to 3x squared minus 6x minus 9. And the stationary points is when f dash of x is equal to 0. So I'm going to make that equal to 0, and then I'm going to solve it. I'm going to divide um, both sides, or every term, by 3, leaving me with x squared minus 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. I'll factorize this. x minus 3 times x plus 1 is equal to 0. And therefore, x is equal to 3 and minus 1. When x is equal to 3, what is y equal to? When x is equal to minus 1, what is y equal to? Because we need to work out what the stationary points are. All we found are the x-coordinates of those stationary points. So, when x is 3, 3 equals answer cubed minus 3, answer squared, minus 9, answer plus 6, minus 21. So we have 3, comma, minus 21. That is our first stationary point. We don't know whether it's a maximum or minimum or a horizontal point of inflection yet. So we'll need to determine the nature um, in step 4. What about when x is minus 1? So minus 1 equals answer cubed minus 3 answer squared minus 9 answer plus 6, 11. So minus 1, 11 is our second stationary point. All right. Step 4 is to determine the nature. Nature of stationary points. We need to differentiate a second time. So we want f double dash of x this time. 
So if f double, sorry, if f dash of x is this one, what do we get when we differentiate that? 6x minus 6. So what's f double dash of 3, right? Because these are our x values that we need to sub in. When x is 3, f double dash of 3 is 6 times 3, which is 18. 18 minus 6 is 12. That's greater than 0, so it's concave up. Therefore, it's a minimum turning point. So this one is a minimum turning point. F double dash of minus 1. 6 times minus 1 is minus 6. Minus 6 is minus 12. That's greater than 0. So, it's, uh, sorry, that's less than 0. So that's concave down. And therefore, it's a maximum turning point. Okay, last thing we need to do before we sketch is to work out any points of inflection. The points of inflection is when f double dash of x is equal to zero. But we've already um, differentiated a second time, it's over here, 6x minus 6. So we've got 6x minus 6 is equal to zero. Let's solve and we can find that x is equal to 1. So when x is equal to 1, what is y equal to? 1 equals, answer cubed, minus 3 answer squared, minus 9 answer, plus 6. Okay, I put it back into the original function because that's what I want, that's what y is equal to, minus 5. So we've got 1 minus 5 is our point of inflection that's where concavity changes from, concave down to up or the other way. So let's sketch this. Right, it seems like we go all the way from minus 21, so I'll just say that's minus 21, all the way up to 11, I'll just say that's 11, it's not, this is not to scale, but that's okay. So we have minus 1, 11. We have 3, minus 21. And we have 1, minus 5. 1, minus 5, here. And we know that the y-intercept is 6. So we'll just say that that's about there, 6. Okay, now according to this, we can see that the left part is going to be um, going down. All right, we know this is a maximum turning point. Okay, at minus uh, 111, minus 111, maximum turning point. It's going to go through uh, the y-intercept of 6. Let's try that again. So it's concave down there, until 1 minus 5, and then it's going to change concavity to concave up. Concave up. I'm going to label these um, key features. We've got minus 1, 11. We have 1 minus 5, and we have 3 minus 21. Done. All right, last one for today, a bit, bit of a challenging one. Sketch f of x is equal to x plus 2 times x minus 2 cubed. All right, so the first thing we need to do is determine um, the shape. Here we've got x cubed times x is x to the power 4, and it's positive, so we know it's going to look something like this, where the endpoints are facing in the same direction. 
both up. Second thing I'm going to do is work out the y-intercept by letting x equal to 0. So we've got 2 times minus 2 cubed is 2 times minus 8, which is minus 16. Third thing we need to do is we need to differentiate this so that we can work out what the stationary points are. Now, in order for us to do this, we actually need to use the chain rule. So let's grab out our formula sheet. Let's just refresh our memories of what the chain rule is. Sorry, the product rule. And the product rule is here. When we've got um, two, two terms in terms of x, and we want to differentiate it, we get this. u times dv dx plus v times du dx. Now, I'm not a huge fan of that. I actually prefer vu dash plus uv dash. So I'm going to write down what u and v are. u is the first one, x plus 2, and v is the second one, x minus 2 cubed. So let's differentiate both with respect to x. When we differentiate this, we just get 1. And when we, we differentiate this, we need to use the chain rule, bring down the power, write down exactly what's in the brackets, bring down the power by 1, but then we need to times it by the derivative of what's inside the brackets. When we differentiate x minus 2, we get 1, so we're just timesing it by 1, which is going to give us the same thing, so I'm not going to do anything with that. So, f dash of x is equal to vu dash, these two times together, plus uv dash, these two times together. And I am going to factorize this. x minus 2 plus, um, I'm just going to expand this straight away. 3 times x is 3x, 3 times 2 is 6. And that's going to give us x minus 2 squared, 4x plus 4. Um, let's leave it at that. So the stationary points is when f dash of x is equal to 0. So we have x minus 2 squared times 4x plus 4 is equal to 0. So x is equal to 2 and minus 1. So when x is equal to 2, y is equal to what? When x is equal to minus 1, what is y equal to? So 2 equals bracket answer plus 2 bracket answer minus 2 cubed is 0. So you have 2, 0. And when x is minus 1, we've got answer plus 2 times answer minus 2 cubed, which is minus 27. So these two are our stationary points. However, we don't know whether it's a minimum, a maximum, or a horizontal point of inflection. So we need to work out the nature. Nature of stationary points. So let's differentiate a second time. Now this one, this time, we need to have a look at this, and we need to differentiate that. We have to use the product rule again. So u is equal to x minus 2 squared, and v is equal to 4x plus 4. So u dash, bring it down, x minus 2 to the power of 1 times the derivative of the what's in the brackets, which is just 1, so just, I'm just going to leave it. And v dash is 4. So, the second derivative, f double dash of x, is equal to v u dash. I'm just going to make this 4 bracket x plus 1. 
So 4 times 2 is 8 times x minus 2 times x plus 1 plus uv dash 4 lots of x minus 2 squared. I'm going to factorize this. I can see they both have 4 and x minus 2 in common, leaving me with 2 lots of x plus 1 plus x minus 2. All right, let's tidy this up. 4 back at x minus 2. 2x plus x is 3x. 2x, sorry, 2, time, uh, 2 minus 2 is 0. So that's just 12x bracket x minus 2. All right, now that we've done that, let's determine the nature. F double dash of the x values of the stationary points of 2. We've got 24 times 0, which is just 0. So that's indicating a horizontal point of inflection. But we'll just double check that. And f double dash of minus 1 is minus 12 times uh, minus 3, which is minus 36. Hold on. Um, minus 12 times minus 3 is positive 36, which is greater than 0. So it's concave up, and that's a minimum. So a minimum turning point. So we know this one here is a minimum turning point. But I would just want to double check to make sure that this one is a horizontal point of inflection with part 5. So the fifth step is to work out any points of inflection. When f double dash of x is equal to 0. So we know f double dash of x is 12x bracket x minus 2 from here. That's what f double dash of x is. When we make that equal to 0, we know x is equal to 0 and 2. When x is equal to 0, y is equal to minus 16, because technically that's the y intercept, so we're going to let x equal to 0. And when x is equal to 2, y is equal to, it's going to equal to 0 because 4 times 0 is 0. So we have 0 minus 16, that's a point of inflection. 2, 0 is also a point of inflection. But this one is a special one. It's a horizontal point of inflection because when x is equal to 2, f dash of 2 is 0 and f double dash of 2 is 0. So it is a horizontal point of inflection. So now that we've done that, let's graph this. All right, looks like it's gonna go all the way down to minus 27. So I'll just, this is not to scale. I'm just gonna say that's minus 27. Um, and that's at minus 1, so minus 1, minus 27. We know it goes from uh, 0, minus 16. I'll just say that's about here. And 2, 0. Over there. All right, I think that's all we have. So let's graph it. Now, we know that both endpoints are going to be um, pointing up. So um, it's going to be pointing up. This is our minimum turning point, minus 1, minus 27. And the point of inflection is that there's one at 0, minus 16. So over here, it's going to 
change from concave up to concave down. But at 2, 0, we know it's a horizontal point of inflection. So it's going to concave down, and then it's going to concave back up. Let's make sure we label this minus 1, minus 27. And that's it. That's enough. All right, so I hope you found this video helpful. Um, I hope you found uh, all the steps useful as well. So this is how um, I like to sketch polynomials. First, identify what the shape will look like, whether the endpoints are facing in the same direction or different directions, and uh, which way it's meant to be. Find a y-intercept. Find the stationary points. Um, determine the nature of the stationary points and find the points of inflection and then graph it. Okay. The most common mistake I find is that students forget to sub in the x values. Okay, if they've worked out um, the x corner of the stationary point or the points of inflection, but they forget to sub it back in and into the original function to work out uh, the y coordinate as well. Because remember, these are points, so we need the x and the y coordinates. Another um, another mistake that a lot of students make is when graphing, they get confused about when concavity changes. Just remember, the point of inflection is where concavity changes. So if we have a look at this green one, this is concave up until the point of inflection, and then it changes to concave down. Okay. Alright, I hope you found this video helpful. Um, have an awesome day, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.